Okay, here we go with question four. The diagram shows part of the k of y equals k over x, where k is a positive constant. Um, the points a and b on the curve have... It's the, the whole screen's on the camera, isn't it? It's, it's all kind of lined up on isn't it? Uh, pretty, pretty much. Pretty much. Great. Um, yes. Lines through a and b are parallel to the axes as shown, and they meet at the point c. The region R is bounded by the curve of the lines x plus 2x plus 6y plus 0. It's one of those ones where you just get tired of reading it. The region S is bounded by the curve of the lines AC and BC. It's given that the area of the region R is ln81. Oh, that's nice. Show that K equals 4. Right. So many letters, so much going on. What, what have we actually been told? The region R, the region R is of area ln81. So we've been told that. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that that region is what you get by integrating this curve, isn't it? Between the points two and six. So actually, all of those words leading to part one of this question were just a very long way of saying that the integral from two to six of k over x dx is equal to the natural log of eighty-one. That was it. That, that was all that they were trying to say in that first bit. So, uh, so writing that down is our start point. Um, if we want to integrate k over x, well, if we integrate if we integrate one over x, it gives us natural log of x, doesn't it? And k is k times one over x. So, if we integrate this, this is k times the natural log of x between two and six, and that is. 81. Uh, ln 81, sorry. Yeah. If we put in our limits, we've got k times natural log of 6 minus k, oh, oh, minus k times natural log of 2 is the natural log of 81. And we're, we've got a common factor of k and we're subtracting, so this is k, lots of ln. 6 minus ln2 is ln3, isn't it? We're happy with that. Is that okay to go straight into that? Is natural log of 81. Um, at which point you you kind of either think, have I still got your calculator? Sorry, Matthew. There you go. At which point you either just go for it with a calculator and do ln81 over ln3, or you, uh, you'd probably do that, wouldn't you? You do that in the calculator. I, I, I might think, yeah, let's let's be clever. Let's say that's ln 3 to the k is ln 81. So 3 to the k is 81. And, uh, and of course, 81 is 3, 3, 9, 27. 81 is 3 to the power of 4. But your calculator would have said k equals 4 if you just did. Yeah. So maybe you look a little bit more special if you do it that way. But anyway. Find the exact volume of the solid produced when the region S is rotated completely about the X axis. Right. Um, one of the things, I, I'm not sure that it's particularly a, a relevant thing in this question, but one of the things that is really, really important that you, you remember is that um, it was a big thing, to, I don't know if you remember last summer's paper, which you did in December. There was a, there was a question that had the area between two curves and then rotating that area around the x-axis to find the volume created when you rotated it. And, and what was really common from that question last time was that loads of students were really happy in the first part about subtracting the functions and then integrating, you know, subtracting and integrating to get the region between the two graphs, the two curves. But then they tried to do the same thing when we were looking for the volume. And that doesn't work. See, when you're doing it for area, if, if these were two curves, if we did the integral of that straight line, take away the integral of, of that one, and then we combined it as one integral and subtracted them, in effect what we're doing is we're, we're translating the area down onto the axis, and then finding it against the axis. If you try and do that with the volume of revolution, then you get the completely wrong answer. Because this time, it really matters how far away from the x-axis that is. Because the further away from the x-axis is, 
the more volume it creates when it rotates. Does that make sense? So it's really important that we don't try and do any shortcuts to combine things here, that we deal with these volumes uh, separately and then and work it out that way. If we're looking for the exact volume of region S, then what we want to do is to find the volume of the whole complete cylinder, because that would create a cylinder, wouldn't it, as you rotate it around. Find the volume created by the curve as it rotates, and then find the difference between them, because the difference between them would be the volume created by that. If you can kind of picture it, that as it, oh, the whole thing rotates, it would create a cylinder, wouldn't it? This bit is kind of like a sort of wedged thing, a tree, oh yeah, like a, like a, tree, a tree stump, I was like, yeah, a tree stump, that, that way, that is in there that you're going to remove from it, and that will leave this ring that's, that's left around the outside. Does that make sense? Can you visualise what's going on, almost? Tree stump, I like that. Right. So, so we're going to have to work through this in a logical order. What we've got is that the volume of the cylinder, and we're going to take away the volume created by the shape R, and that's going to leave us with the volume of X that we want. That's, that's the calculation that we're doing as we work this through. So let's work out these bits. Uh, the cylinder. What do, we, what do we need to know? The cylinder, we need to know uh, radius and height. And then we can do uh, pi r squared h. Well, we've got that would be the height of it. And the radius would be the y coordinate of a and c, whatever that is, is the radius. So the first thing we need to work out is what's the coordinates of the point a? Uh, x equals 2, y equals 4 over x because k is 4. So that's 4 over 2, so y equals 2. So I think we're happy that uh, it's got <coughs> a, a radius of 2. a is the point 2, 2. Uh, a is the point 2, 2. Radius equals 2. The height of our cylinder is 4. And the volume of cylinder is pi r squared h pi times 2 squared times 4, so 16 pi, which I'm just going to check. Did it say exact? It did say exact. So we're going to keep that in exact form as 16 pi. Great start. Next we need the volume of r. Well, volumes of revolution, this is pi times the integral of y squared dx. Remember that? So this is pi times the integral from 2 to 6 of y squared if y equals 4 over x, as we've just established, y squared is 16 over x squared. So that's pi times the integral of 16 over x squared dx. And this is such a common thing that the examiners do is they give us an integral, um, and the integral is a natural log integral, and then they turn it into a volume of revolution, hoping that students will stumble into the trap of, oh, it was a natural log integration before, it would be a natural log one again, because I've already integrated this. But of course it's not now, is it? This is 16x to the minus 2 that we're integrating. Pi times 16x to the minus 2, so we put pi inside the integral now. So when we integrate that, we're going to add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So it's I'm moving the pi back out again. 16 x to the minus 1 over minus 1 between the points 2 and 6. So that is pi times, now that is minus 16 over x between 2 and 6. So our volume is going to be... Minus 16 over 6, take away minus 16 over 2. And it, it, they did want us to do this exact. So what have we got in here? We've got 8, take away 8 thirds. Is that right? Yes. I've just written it as 8 over 8. For no obvious reason. Um, which is 16 thirds. Is that okay? 16 
pi over 3. And again, you're, you're doing this exactly on your calculator and it's giving you all these things. Um, now, we already said what we were going to do here. Our final volume, the volume that we're after of S, is then the cylinder volume, which was 16 pi, take away the volume of the bit that we're removing, which was 16 pi over 3. And again, your calculator will sort that out for you, but 16 is 48 thirds, isn't it? So 48 takes 16 is 32 pi over 3. Okay, really, really important, because I, I know from marking, marking exams and, and stuff with you over this year, that we're not always that great at, at really carefully reading about exact answers. And so it's really, really important that you've noticed that it says give the exact volume and that you don't start writing 16 pi as a decimal and writing this as a decimal at the end of it. it you know, you must keep it exact. There we go. In fact, the mark scheme for this question, um, it, it had to be exact. Yeah, it was only the last mark of the form that came to me, but it must have been an exact value. Uh, and they actually, they accepted that. That's the final answer. They were happy with 16 pi minus 16 pi over 3, even if you didn't get... Uh, well, no, actually, sorry, reading this, it did and hence 32 pi over 3. So it, you didn't have to do that final answer. Or exact equivalent, so if you wrote 10 and 2 thirds, it's, it's fine. Right. And that's maths.